Hey everybody, time for a couple announcements that I've got. One is a reminder that we have our annual congregational meeting on January 24th, and that will be a virtual meeting. Um, what you'll be required to do is to receive the annual report, which we will send to you, and then approve it, um, vote yes or no, and uh, you have to vote also on my terms of call. My terms of call are the same as they were last year, just so you know. Um, and so you're going to need to vote yes or no and send your vote to our clerk of session, Robin Woodruff. As time gets closer, I will give you her email address and put it up on the screen uh, and you can see that. But that's the way that will go. Uh, the second thing I wanted to remind you of is that Michelle and Eleanor did graciously offer to make a Valentine's box lunch for people. And so if you would like to participate in that, please RSVP to them. Their numbers should appear right in here somewhere if I'm doing this right. Um, uh, there's their numbers, uh, RSVP by February 10th, and that way uh, they'll know how many to cook for on February 14th. The idea is for you just to drive your car to the O'Reilly side. Uh, I'll be there handing out boxes. Other people will be there handing out boxes, the lunches that Eleanor and Michelle make, and we'll give them to you, and you can drive on through. Maybe chat for just a second. Um, I think the hour we said was 12 o'clock to 12.30. That's kind of the window of what we're aiming for. So, again, if you would, RSVP to Michelle and Eleanor. Let them know you're interested, and we'll see you February 14th. That's it for my announcements. You guys uh, have a great week. Go forth in Christ. Hey everybody, this is somewhere over there. There's the United States. There's my arrow over to Israel and I'll circle Israel. I'm going to show you some pictures of the Jordan River since I talked about the baptism of Jesus and people going out to John uh, to be baptized in the River Jordan in the text this week. Uh, but it's significant for another reason. Of course, the Old Testament significance is that the Israelites crossed into the Promised Land and they crossed through uh, the Jordan. They went over the Jordan River there. You can see that the Jordan River actually begins way up north of the Sea of Galilee. It uh, comes in from Lebanon, drops all the way through the Hula Valley. You can see that there with Syria to the east and Israel to the west, and it does form the boundary for those two countries. And it comes on down the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee is where I stayed when I was in Israel for the first week of our trip. Uh, it's also known sometimes as the Sea of Tiberias. Um, uh, the Jordan drops uh, into the Sea of Galilee, then uh, runs through and comes back out and runs down the Jordan Valley. Uh, you can see the Jordan River there running uh, in the middle between Jordan, the country, and Israel. And it runs all the way down to the Dead Sea. Again, it is the boundary uh, for those two countries. And that's about 75 miles or so, uh, uh, part of the river from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea. And that's where it stops. Uh, but anyway, I hope this gives you a better sense of what um, or where, I guess, things were taking place with the baptism of Jesus and also with the Israelites crossing to the promised land. I'll see you next time.
Hey everybody, uh, I'm not going to do two times talk today, I'm going to do one time talk uh, today because I wanted to talk about the uh, mob uh, in the Capitol. I know you've heard a thousand people probably give their opinions, but as your pastor I thought I should say a word or two about it. And to put a finer point on it, I really want to make a comparison or I guess um, uh, say I don't think there is a comparison between the Black Lives Matter movement and the attack on the nation's capital. There have been some online who have suggested that these two are similar, people just exercising their right um, to express themselves or to uh, fight for what they believe in. Um, but these two things aren't related at all, and I wanted to talk about why I believe that's the case. Uh, let's face facts and, and let's work with facts. Uh, there is a history of racism in our country, there's no question about it. There is uh, a history that um, one group of people, white people, have oppressed another group of people, black people, and enslaved them. Uh, there's no question about that. We don't debate that. That's history. That's fact. Um, the fact that we have a group of people uh, who, on average, that is people of color, make less money for the same job as their white counterpart uh, by percentage of population uh, is, is just statistically true. Uh, similarly, uh, those who are incarcerated or shot by police uh, also, those numbers are higher for people of color than they are for their white counterparts uh, by percentage of population. And so there is a system that is holding a group of people down. And that system is what Black Lives Matter wants to change and struggles to change and fights to change for a group of people who have been oppressed by another group of people and to level the playing field to make everything equal racially and to not make it so that one group, whites, can oppress another group, people of color. That is what Jesus was all about, liberating the captives, letting the oppressed uh, have some relief, setting the prisoner free, right? This is what Jesus was all about, being for those who are marginalized, being for those who are um, oppressed by another group, just exactly what we're talking about. By contrast, there are no statistics and no facts to support the notion that the uh, election was stolen. There is no evidence of voter fraud. Uh, the Supreme Court, the court systems, uh, did not think that there was. William Barr, Attorney General, didn't think that there was and doesn't think that there was. Uh, many people who were running these uh, voter election, the election process, believe that it was one of the safest we've ever had and one of the uh, most uh, accurate we've ever had. There is simply uh, absolutely no statistical uh, facts that support the idea that the election was stolen. And yet that is what precipitated this whole movement to our capital and incited by our president, um, which is unfathomable to me uh, that someone could do that and then deny it afterwards or not at least apologize for it afterwards. Uh, to seemingly not even learn a lesson from it afterwards. This mob that moved, moved with uh, great violence and great um, anger and hatred, uh, treated people poorly, treated our nation's capital poorly, uh, didn't do it at all uh, what is um, uh, kind of what you would want and expect for people who are protesting or resisting something. Um, what did I say in the Sunday sermon? Jesus did resist political and um, religious leaders. Uh, who he felt like were not honoring their commitment to their calling. And so, but, but how did he do it? He came riding in on a donkey. He came in with ideas. He came in with stories, parables. He came in with a small band of people who were going to do what? Help and heal, have compassion, love, and offer forgiveness. This is the way Jesus was going to do it, not a mob mentality that came in with violence and destruction. To compare these two things to me, um, well is really misguided. And so I felt like I needed to say something about that. The liberation of people who are oppressed is one thing. Not liking election results is another. I want to say one last thing, and that is about Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick took a knee. Let that sink in. Took a knee. No violence. No destruction. No spewing of hatred. He took a knee. And the offense that people took at that is to me unbelievable. He did exactly what you ought to do. Not respond with violence, even though he didn't like the situation and doesn't like the situation. <clears throat> didn't respond with hatred. Didn't respond with destruction. He took a knee. 
To me, that's Christ-like. It's nonviolent, but you still express your point. The other thing that makes it Christ-like is the self-sacrifice. Colin Kaepernick lost his job, lost his source of income because of that, lost endorsements. Now you may think, oh, football, you know, no one has a right to make their stand on a football game. Hey, that's fine with me. I don't care if you think football is worth anything. Uh, but it cost him his livelihood. He sacrificed for what he believed in, and he did it nonviolently. This seems to me to be exactly what Jesus is asking us to do. If we're going to make changes, to make changes in ways that are nonviolent, that are compassionate, that are ways that are better ideas than the current way the leadership is going. Whatever it is that you feel like you need to resist or protest, it should at least be able to be done with words or a simple nonviolent action like taking a knee. Those are my thoughts on the subject. I may make this a regular segment um, where I just talk about some of the things that I have read online that I disagree with. Uh, there are a few things that come to mind. Prayer in school is one of them. Um, I don't really think we want uh, sanctioned prayer in school. Separation of church and state, uh, that's another one that I think uh, we need to remember. Uh, I think needs to be addressed, I guess. Um, and then there was another one. Oh, um, yeah, the idea that God won't give you more than you can handle. I've heard that uh, posted online. These are all things that sound good on the surface, but when you scratch beneath the surface, you kind of go, well, wait a minute. That might lead to a place uh, that's not really what we're after. And so I may address some of those in a segment. And uh, I didn't want to do both two times talk and this segment in the same week because it's, uh, it's a new segment. It's a new idea. And I haven't fleshed it out completely, but... Um, as I do, I think you can expect to see that, and those are some of the topics that I'll address. Something I've read online or that I've heard uh, a snippet on uh, the news or something, and I want to address that and say, is that really what we believe, and is that really what we want to uh, kind of, um, uh, I guess, repost or say that we agree with, um, and, and maybe say a reason why I think, eh, maybe not. So this may be an ongoing segment. If you um, have any ideas that you would like for me to address, feel free to let me know. In the meantime, I hope you have a blessed week and um, go forth in Christ. Well, that's the end of our show, but I do have uh, one announcement. If you are watching this on YouTube, do us a favor and go to our website. If you go to our website, you can see our worship videos and other content. Maybe you'll like what you'll see. and Maybe you'll want to be a part of what we do at 3016 Preston Highway in Louisville, Kentucky. When we reopen for in-person worship and all the other activities we do. So check us out, fourthpc.org. It's all the stuff I got today. Hope you have a blessed week. That's the end of our show today. It's kind of sad, but I'm glad to say I'll see you another day. But that's the end of our show. And whether you face friend or foe, keep living the faith you know. Let your love grow and grow. That's the end of our show. That's the end of our show today. That's the end of our show today. That's the end of our show today. Go forth in Christ.